salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to Three Peas in a Pod, episode 187. We made it. And I was just telling the guys that in case you didn't know, the number 187 is the call number for police officers when they've been a murder. Oh, how do you know that? I'll tell you how I know that. Smooth dog talk. Oh. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that song where <laughs> I, 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 I do. I do. I didn't know that's how you do. Hell. It says 187 on an undercover. <laughs> I'm not a condoning that. I just know that. What, what is uh, interesting for people who watch this and don't go to community Christian, there are probably lots of people at community Christian. They that know, know this. Know, not, not because they're police officers either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they got called on one. No, I'm just saying they've learned the codes. That's right. They know yes. the police scanner. Which, speaking of that, there is a Facebook account that uh, exists in our county, and it is a guy somewhere in our county who monitors the scanner and oh, puts yes. it all on oh, Facebook. Know. You know that guy? It, I don't know the it's guy. It's hilarious. It, I, to me, it's irritating. Well, it's just I think irritating. It's it cracks me up because he gives the play-by-play stuff that's going on in our, our so it's like the chase the, the chases is, is, and what's and been happening and the crazy crimes that go on for any neighbors that are in my that are in my neighborhood who are mm-hmm. watching this I don't mean this to be personally offensive but my mm-hmm. neighborhood's a little over the top about everything that a little. might be like there was a man that passed away this week they found him in mm-hmm. a lake and immediately somebody saw it on the scanner and me and they, all the terrible things happened in the noon I'm thinking you know, people probably been walking by lakes, falling over dead in them for hundreds of years. I'm and sure nobody they have. thought. Mm. And I we should drain that and see if there's anybody <laughs> down there. I just, I said to them, I said, why do we have to assume this was a right. other thing other than the guy yeah. had a heart attack or something happened? Right. And I feel like we should say this: condolences to the family if they're listening. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Yes, we should. I'm sorry. They may be regular. I don't think about those things, Jason. I'm trying to be sensitive. I'm apologizing. Jason is very sensitive. I I am a very sensitive guy. We're starting over. Welcome to 187. Don't go down that road again. Okay. 187. All right. And we're glad you're here for this uh, because we got another question we're going to answer. I believe this comes from, I I think this person has been at our church a while because they they seem to have a little history with our church. Insider information. A little insider information. So for those of you who are new, this might not interest you as much, but for those of you who are diehard community Christian folk, this might matter to you. Or not, but it matters to somebody. Here it is. But I like this wow, question. Wow, look at the type you were reading. That is tiny. It's tiny, isn't it? I'm going to have to do some work. I just looked over and I thought, I'll see what the next question is, and no, I cannot no. read that. Good luck. Here's today's question. Let's keep let's keep focused. I'm sorry. Let's keep focused on today's question. All right, I'm Normally, ready. I'm I am focused. super focused. <laughs> I just looked at, I gave him the side eye for those of you who are listening, because that ain't true. Question for the day. It seems like Community Christian Church has become much more serious Mm. since COVID. Mm. What happened to the entertaining videos that you (laughs) use, as opposed to this one that isn't? What happened to the entertaining videos that you used to do before the services? It was refreshing to find a church that could be fun and laugh at itself. So here's a question. Why y'all ain't funny no more? I, I, You're boring now. I still think I'm funny. I, you know, I read, but I read that. Everybody does. Mm-hmm. I read that question beforehand, and I thought I understood it. But then, it, did, did it say entertaining before well, the service? Well, they were just wrong. It says before the service yeah. or during. Well, services. there were it's those. The person vid- that used to come in just as the videos were playing, <laughs> and they thought, "Oh, <laughs> this just started, and these <laughs> services are 22 minutes long." <laughs> just, there was a really <laughs> short period of time that we did play. Mm. Instead of having band preludes, we had video preludes that were funny videos. And I'm thinking maybe they're talking about that specific. Oh, yeah, oh is that the stuff with the bloopers right. and forgot. people? Like, no, no, we had like because we played like a Key and Peele sketch. I was right. just like finding oh, online my. videos and playing. Forgot that. That's right. Well, oh, the copyright the... would be one thing. Without yeah. A, oh yeah. Once sure. Now that we have streaming. to stream it, you can't. You can't stream that. But I'm assuming what they mean is there was a a long period of time. Yeah. Of videos. Let's that... answer the question we want to answer. No. <laughs> I think I know what they're asking. <laughs> the, there was a long time for people who don't know that our services uh, had a lot of different elements than they are right now. Um, 
where we had a lot of humorous videos in them. We also used to start the service pretty regularly. I've had people ask about this with like rock, like rock music or music that was like from the radio, right? So mm -hmm. we, I mean, we've done everything ACDC, Metallica to Taylor Swift. Like yeah. we've done. And it was actually from the radio because once people stopped listening to the radio, we were still doing music from the radio. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. And so, so there was all that. And then, but even before that, we had live dramas we that did. were before that. And all of those things were different ways that we were trying to help people who were new to church. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think in a broad sense, you can get I'm more probably specific. I'm the only one sitting here that remembers. There was a time where we had live testimonies. Really? I don't remember that. I so. don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were a kid at the time and you were not hired here yet. Mm. There you go. So, so we've had various incarnations of what the service looks like. Different of stuff. Different kinds of versions of what a church service looks like at Community Christian. But always, including now, mm -hmm. the goal behind has been to really do two things. Hopefully, we think at the same time. One, we want to honor Jesus. We want to give honor and glory to Jesus. And we want to do so in a way that people who don't know Jesus... <laughs> Uh, can feel like they can also be a part of the experience. So it's really this, uh, I don't even think it's a tension to be balanced because I think when you do things for the sake of someone who doesn't know Jesus, Jesus is also honored and glorified right. by that. But there is a level of, uh, we're going to sing to Jesus, we're going to receive communion, we're going to pray to Jesus, even if that might at times be uncomfortable to someone who doesn't know Jesus. So it's always been, that has been the reason behind the way our service looks mm. the way it looks in various times yes and that's always changed always. what it the, looks the like methods change. always change yes. always the, yes. the the purpose never changes mm -hmm. but the methods change so let's talk about why why were we more goofy at one point well we there was a time where we really thought in the research that we've done we were at one time uh really focused on uh what was a guy whose wife maybe wanted to go to church, but he didn't want to go to church, and what mm -hmm. he kind of had an interest in, because if we could get the guy to come to church, we thought we'd get the whole family to come to church. And uh, we knew that guys like goofy humor. Mm. Most, yes. most guys. Which, can I say this? Did, did y'all know we had a viral video at one time? Oh, we remember did. our yes. viral video. I'm saying it's video. you can find it on. It's there still, is no reason for you to find this. Video. No, <laughs> I'm just saying we've had two. We've had one video. We've had a few that got uh, thousands of views, and then we got one that got over a couple million views. Yeah, we have one that if you take what it did on, because it did better on Facebook actually yes. than on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yes, did. but it. It's over 2 million now on Facebook, and yeah. we still get comments on it occasionally yes, that people, because things don't go away on the internet. Yes. We have a few other ones. We have one that you all remember that where, and there's no reason for you to find this, and this one is not on the Community Christian YouTube page. It is on a person's web YouTube page that is attached to Community Christian where we made fun of Carrie Underwood's song, Jesus, Jesus take, take the, the wheel, wheel. Mm -hmm. and I bet we still get a comment a week at least on mm. that video. Yeah, we do. <laughs> people, it still gets views. We'll have people that'll come and they commented eight years ago, and they'll come back and go, "Still funny still eight great. years later." <laughs> yeah, good job. So back to your original. Sorry, I interrupted you, but oh yeah. So we we had we had a person, you know, when we. Uh, Look at a target audience. That's the way I'd say it. And I know some people are really frustrated when you think about the idea of a target audience. I had this conversation with a guy the other day. You know, Jesus also had a target audience. It was yeah. called the Jewish people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In fact, he would regularly say to his disciples, do not go to the Gentiles. That's right. Do not talk to the Gentiles, not which yet. is a part of the reason when that one Gentile lady comes to them, the disciples send him away, her away. All they're doing is doing what Jesus had told mm -hmm. them to do. Yes. And right. people get upset and he goes, what? That's what he told us to do. Mm -hmm. So we and have a target. He audience. had a target. We had a target. We've had one. Paul since had a target when you talk about it. Paul, Paul said he was sent to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. uh, and through the years, the target has changed. Yes. And the target through the years has just continued to change. And so in the early earliest days of this church, our target was people who liked uh, Jesus 
-hmm. but they didn't like the church at all. They weren't going to go to any kind of church, and we were really the most contemporary. We were contemporary when what is now called contemporary was actually contemporary. (laughs) It was... I got to. We didn't sing any of the songs that anybody else sang. We didn't do anything like anybody else did and got criticized widely about it, but it was because... We wanted to say to the person who liked Jesus, when you come to this church, this is not like anything you have in your mind. It still mm-hmm. will talk to you about Jesus. It will still challenge you, but it is not what you had in your mind. Mm-hmm. Then over the years, I mean, that we stayed with that for, you know, seven, eight years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were doing... We were doing live drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, couldn't do it in the beginning because we didn't have anybody that could do drama in the beginning. And then we got a few people that did drama, and they did it every Sunday mm-hmm. forever. A long time. And then we would do that, often followed by secular song, songs that weren't Christian. We did, I can remember doing Phil Collins. I can remember when Titanic was out. We sang that song that, you know, uh, my heart will go my on. My heart will go on. I don't, I don't uh, remember that. But. Uh, we, well, you weren't here yet. I wasn't. No. Mm. Uh, so we sang all those kind of things. We sang some sticks. Uh, yeah. you know, I know. I'm not saying it was good choices. Oh, they yeah. just fit with what we were trying to say that day. <laughs> and uh, and then there were a whole bunch of people that asked this kind of question about why y'all go to those dumb videos mm-hmm. when we, I mean, we just stopped, we stopped live, live drama pretty, I mean, just boom. As soon as we started campuses, we, I mean, we did a handful of live things on yeah. campuses, but it pretty Not much like. ended at that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went to filming things that we would have done mm-hmm. live, but we changed them because video is a different medium. Mm-hmm. Well, and the goal was always at that time as you said, the goal has was always to reach the one, and our idea was the person who is far from Jesus, right, um, and doesn't understand that. What they're really looking for is they want to follow Jesus, but there's all this baggage that church brought for them, right? Maybe right. they'd been hurt by the church, or maybe they grew up in a church that was very judgmental, and the idea was, hey, boring. Boring, that's what I mean. It was boring. And was very Irrelevant. much yeah. the the secular world had like we are completely cut off from everything that happens out here and so there was a there was a point where it says hey it was important for us to say you can have your radio tuned to something that's not j93.3 and still follow jesus you can watch things like saturday night live because we got sketches that are like saturday Night Live." it was really a way to try and tie in as the word was everyone was looking hey god is relevant to your life. The real world that you live in, this is what we did. So we did a lot of things that were really modeled uh, after in our services that were modeled more after like a variety show type mentality of we're going to have sketches like Saturday Night Live. We're going to have bands playing special songs like you would see on and a variety show. And our idea show. was if we could take a song you were going to hear on the radio or that you listen to all the time and we repurposed it in church, mm-hmm. that would be followed by a message that the speaker would occasionally refer to when you heard that song on the radio, you'd think about the message of Jesus, mm-hmm. and it would want you to. It gave the Holy Spirit opportunities other than just when we were talking to make that work. Yep. But what has switched in the last? And I'll say this because this one thing I'd like to correct about their question is they said this happened after COVID, and it didn't. We actually made this switch about 2018, where we did a lot less. Um, funny kind of goofy videos and we did a lot more of what we started calling these worship experiences these long extended it might include a dramatic piece like a performed piece that then had something but we started having moments of extended quiet i remember because i was looking back when i saw this question at those because i I ended up writing a lot of those early worship experiences and i remember i wrote for the very first one that we did i said we're gonna have two minutes of silence and everyone goes there is no way anyone's gonna put up with two minutes of silence just do 20 seconds of silence and i remember after that because just the way our service was we used to have a thing in our service of no dead air no dead air no quiet time we can't have any dead space when we did 20 seconds, people go, man, that 20 seconds felt like a lot of quiet. Well, now we regularly have two, two yeah, and a half minutes of quiet two, two in the minutes. middle of the service. I thought, that's just funny. It's just how things yeah, change. That's right. The reason why is because we realized uh, for younger generations, millennials, right, not baby boomers and Gen X who we were trying to appeal to before, they don't have baggage about church. Um, they don't have, some have church hurt, but not really a ton have church hurt. Um 
mostly what church has become for them, it's irrelevant in a different sense. They're not interested at this point even in trying to figure out what does Jesus have to say to my life. They are looking for, and I heard someone else say this, they're not looking for relevance, they're looking for resonance. Mm -hmm. They are looking for the message of Jesus to mean something deeply to my life. That our world has more, I don't know if you've been on the internet, has more than enough content. Mm -hmm. No one is coming to the church to go, what's the, tell me a joke, <laughs> tell me the funniest thing. They're not looking for content from us. They're not looking for something uh, that is super relevant. They are looking for something that makes sense of their life. Well, and there's a sense that what the internet has done, in my opinion, about anything that really matters is it skimmed the top of everything. Mm -hmm. People think they know, let's, I mean, the war in Ukraine, most people think they know everything that's happened in Ukraine because mm -hmm. there's somebody talking about it every minute. But most of us read the headline right. right, and maybe the caption, and we think, oh, I know everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. And people have done the same in what most, and I, I don't think this is just younger. I, the nature of our country is whatever is going on with the younger people, older generations eventually feel. Mm -hmm. They just maybe, they feel it later. But it, it happens is there is a sense people are like, man, I when it comes to God, I want to know the real stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to be a little bit I don't want to skim over the top of this. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think people are looking for an experience mm -hmm. um, beyond give me some knowledge. You know, there was a period where it was really important that our sermon topics be here are, you know, five steps for your marriage, here are five steps for your kids, here's five steps for your finances because the feeling at that time was I want to know that what I was taught as a kid, because for most baby boomers, they at least had had some experience. They knew a lot of the Bible stories. They knew a lot of this kind of thing. I need to know this thing my mom believe, believed, it could actually impact my practical day-to-day -day life. The problem for a lot of millennials and younger is they have no basis within the Bible. They have no basis within a context of really Christian upbringing. And what they are looking for is I want to know God can make sense of my life, that there is something more to this life than just getting a good marriage and just get raising good kids and just doing this. I want to know there's this deeper thing. And so we started really trying to pull out in our services these moments where people could take what was being taught. And this part did change in COVID, I think, is that when we were able to start breaking up our sermons, where it wasn't one person talking for 35 minutes with one main point, and here's your action step, you go leave and do it. When we could take that and then talk for a little bit and get to one point that might be very personal to you, we can get out and give you a minute 90 seconds, two minutes of quiet to pray and talk to God about this thing I've just heard. Where is that hitting me? What does God want me to know? It leaves space for the Holy Spirit. We hope at least, and we are hearing from some people that this works. The Holy Spirit then gets quiet and it doesn't feel like a really good performed speech, like TED Talk thing. It doesn't feel like, oh, the lights were in the right spot and the music was in the... It was just quiet with me and God um, and we hope that it resonates with people mm. and that helps them make a story that makes sense of their life and it will draw them closer to Jesus. I remember us having this conversation at one point saying, you know, what we what we think we're, we're able to accomplish in our services these days is uh, offering people something that you can't get anywhere else. Right. And that is a, a moment of transcendence. Yes. A moment of... Uh, solitude or, or silence or whatever it might be, but where I can just, I can pull myself out of the the noise and the activity and the constant barrage of information, and I can just quiet that for a minute because the problem with most of our modern lives is we don't have the space right. to hear the, the voice of God and to the, to feel the nudgings of the, of the Holy Spirit and we're trying to carve out some space. And I think we say this often. I know I do when I'm hosting the services. I'll say, you know, we're going to give you 60 seconds of quiet. It might be the most quiet you've had yes. all week. Use it and just sit with God for a moment. Pray, listen, whatever, and give the Holy Spirit room to, to so he can speak and listen. And I feel like uh, that's something that most people 
have a hard time building into their day-to-day life. Well, going back to the thing that Ed said earlier, one of the things I, I, I have been really kind of filling my mind with the idea of is, you know, we consume more information than any human being in That's history right. yes. was able to. I, I read something. I can't remember the exact data. You can probably look it up and see, but I think it's within one week the average human reads more words mm-hmm. than, than a person 400 years ago would have read in their entire lifetime, yeah. that we consume so much information. But because they had quiet mm-hmm. to sit, we are not digesting information. Mm-hmm. So what's happening is, you go back to the thing of you were saying, it is relevant for us if we, were, if we wanted to be relevant, let's talk about the war in Ukraine and let's bring it up and we'll throw out a bunch of things. Resonance is... I just read about a war in Ukraine, right? And then I read that, you know, that horrible headline everyone saw of where they were gathering women and children in these stadiums and people were being sexually assaulted and brutally attacked. You read that, you hear the information that's relevant. And then you have no time to sit and go, what did that do to my soul to a, know that human beings do that to yeah, one another? Yeah. The next thing you see is something lighthearted that somebody you're from your Here's what I ate for lunch. And right. You, yeah, I mean, you it's a, in the same feed as yes. these people. The lives. You're relevant. Them. You're up to date. You know what's yeah. going on. It but brings everything to the to, to an even right. level. And I mean, if you think about the amount of time. Cause I, I I I I think about this sometimes. I catch myself when I'm scrolling on something like Twitter, you know, and I'm just reading lots of things that people post and mm-hmm. things that are going on in the world or opinions that people have. I could spend thirty minutes doing that. And walk away from it, and I cannot tell you probably one thing that that happened in that thirty minutes that right. that resonated with right. me that I'm going to take that I'm going to grow from, or it's, it's going to affect my real life. It's just noise. That's or right. gave me time to deal with yes. what's going on in my life That's because right. often when they call it doom scrolling, yeah. you know, the doom scrolling is I'm wanting to numb this mm-hmm. this this feeling within me that. I am really, you know, we talk about, we just said the thing about five tips for your marriage. For some people, they don't even need new tips for their marriage. What they really need is they need to sit for a moment and go, oh, I really am very anxious about my marriage, or I am very discontent. I know, like, if if you said to most husbands, hey, you know what? If you would spend more time talking to your wife and just listening to what she has, I don't think there are many husbands going, talk. To my wife, mm-hmm. I've never heard this There's before. Ain't, they're well, anxious about doing it. Yes, yeah. but if you could have some time where you sat in the quiet and you said, "Hey, you know what? If you, tr- if I could sit with that fear, or I could sit with that or whatever." Even, even I, and this is coming from my mental health background right, right. now. The, I've been sitting. With, I sit with clients a lot, and one of the number one obstacles that I have to help people get over is just to. First of all, to have a vocabulary of emotions. Yeah, Most sure. people, and I, I'll ask mm-hmm. people, because, you know, that old that therapist asks every client, how does that make you feel? If you ask somebody how you feel, most people will tell you what they think. That's right. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's what we've been conditioned that's to. Right. What do I think about this? What's my opinion about this? What's my thought? And, and I have to go back and say, no, that's what you think. I'd like to know how you feel. Mm-hmm. And, and usually they, they kind of look back at me, and, and it, most people have to think a while and go, I, I don't know. It, or, or it's simply, well, I'm, I'm sad or I'm happy. It's very bland kind of word yeah. because, that, like you just, the point I'm making is mm-hmm. tagging on to mm-hmm. your point. We are not trained. We don't know how to sit with our feelings. That's and, right. We, and so, therefore, we don't even know our feelings. We just don't have a clue. And so then we get disconnected mm-hmm. from, and now we can't do relationships. Because <laughs> when you don't know that stuff, you can't relate to another human being. You don't have empathy. Well, and when you take it to our relationship with Jesus yes. and our relationship with God, I guarantee even a millennial who is not raised in church, mm-hmm. the idea that Christians think that God loves you, mm-hmm. I bet is not radical to them. The idea that they think that Jesus uh, died for your sins and you can find new life in him. I mean, maybe someone who is just very, but I have a couple friends in my life who did not have not spent any time in church. They know that's what Christians believe. Okay. It, they don't need the relevant information. It's when I sit in the quiet and I'm able to digest. You just got up and talked about God's love in in a you know in a long form way, which got into the weeds of what that looks like and the bad things I've done and all that. And then I can sit in the quiet and maybe even allow the voice of God to break through and say, 
No, I want you to experience my love. Well, I, I want you to that. have an experience. I think the other thing that has changed is we've put more emphasis on uh, being a part of the body and what mm-hmm. happens with each other. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We'll often have that. And you said earlier, I don't think most people have church hurt. I think that's right because the generation, they haven't experienced the church much. But I think there's a lot of Christian hurt. And sure. They have experienced some Christians in their life. Uh, that have individually hurt them, and um, they they don't know what it feels like to be around a Christian who's genuinely trying to grow in an environment with them that when they relate to them isn't going they they may know Christians as a general believe that God loves you and that Jesus died for you, but every Christian they've met has been pushing something at them mm-hmm. or wanting something from them or expecting more than they thought they could give. And so they're hurt by that. And to just be with a group of people that are just with them, to be for them, to include them, as soon as you want to be included, that that's hard for some people to get their head around mm-hmm. and you have to experience it. It's why I have a hard time these days recommending our online service to anybody. I mean, we we stream it, and I know it's good for people who are a part of our body who, for whatever reason, can't be here. But it is it is really a poor... To call what happens online church is really... It's, it's just... It's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that's really radical from what other people are saying, and I'm probably wrong. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, I think, I, it's just not the same thing. And I think it's not what we're trying to do. I think the thing that Jason talked about, I know is at least the way I try to talk about it to our team that's in that room creating that particular environment, the service part, mm-hmm. is uh, we are trying to create an otherworldly experience. There was a while, and I mean very intentionally, that our our choice was not to create an otherworldly experience. We were trying to create similar experience. We used right. to say we play our music at 92 decibels because that's the normal volume at a bar. We play our normal thing because we were trying to create, once again, because it was a different audience. We were trying to say, hey, you don't have to remove God from these other parts of your life, right? That the way the way You're going to walk in here and the music you're going to hear because you're going to have your arms crossed because you're like, I know what church is. I know how stuffy these people are. And when you walk in and you hear a song that was just playing on your radio, you kind of uncross your arms. Or someone gets up and plays Highway to Hell in a church service as the opening song. You go, okay. It sets you back on your heels and goes, maybe I don't know what's going on. That's not the same audience, though, that we are trying to engage with. They are not walking in thinking Christians don't listen to the radio. Most of the, even the ones that hurt them, they knew you're watching Game of Thrones and (laughs) listening to this and you're drinking alcohol and doing all, they know all of those things. They're not, that's not their concern. Their concern is, do you have anything to say that makes more sense of my life than my college professor did or, you know, my therapist did or my mom's best friend did? Do you bring anything to make sense because all of these people tried to make sense of my life to me and told me, go after your dreams, follow your heart. And that has not worked for me. And it feels hollow and empty. And they need to step into a place where when they step in, they hear a message that is, you use the word transcendent, right? Which it really is otherworldly. It feels like I've never been in a place that feels like this. It's why our stage design is so simple. We just have the cross up there. We have these kind of faux stained glass because we're trying to create this sense of you've never really been in a place that's like this. This isn't just like, this is not a a multi-purpose room, which at one point was important for us as a church Mm -hmm. to have. It doesn't mean any of the way we used to do things, these funny videos were wrong. I was telling two people. Product of its time. Yes, and it was good and helpful and was Good for that audience we were trying. There are a lot of people who came to Jesus because they realized, oh, I don't have to be stuffy and out of touch with the world to follow Jesus. That's just not who we are trying to reach right now because... It's not our culture these days. It's not who is out there anymore. Yep. That's right. All right. So, we are still funny. I think so. Just not in the same way. I think I'm very funny. I, I... I think we laugh and have a good time around here. I don't know if people think we're funny. I well, I don't know if that was ever true. There, that's true. That some people laughed and some well, people. Complained. I was there frequently... were many many Sundays that I didn't think we were funny. No, no. and there were people that complained about them at the time. As the person who was no. in a 
good majority of those yes. funny videos, uh, I got I heard from many people who did not like what we were doing. I agree. So well, yeah, here's I a, here's the thing that has never changed in the whole thirty year run of our church. Everything we do, some people hate. Yes. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. That's for sure. And when we change it, there's another group that yeah. hates that. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's the way it is. That's and people will continue hating it. Yeah, I guess and so. People, some people probably just hated that. Yeah, they, that's right. That's, that's okay. That's the nature of opinions. It is who we are. We at least, I will say this I, as honestly as I can, and I've been in all of that stuff up to this point. It has never been our intention, one, to offend people. Nope. Nor no. necessarily to make everybody happy. That's, right. that's that's never been our goal. Our goal has always been we're trying to honor Jesus while attracting people who don't know Jesus and helping them. What I always say is I want to say, here's Jesus, here's you. Let me introduce you all. Y'all work out your stuff. That's right. That's <laughs> there you go. Because everybody's got something with Jesus they need to work out. That's right. Us included. Us yes. included. That's exactly right. All right. So if you have another question you'd like us to answer, uh, look into the description of this podcast, this video, and uh, click there. You'll find a form where you can send us questions. Give us your name if you like. Leave it anonymous if you like. We answer all questions. Serious right. questions. <laughs> yes. And some not so serious, but we'll answer them. So we'll have another one next week. So join us. See y'all. Have a good one.